Mazda, driving matters. LA is brought to you by Mazda, driving matters. Dodgers and Giants ready to face off game one in this three game series. And Matt Kane ready to take it for San Francisco. Giants playing some of their best baseball of the season over the weekend against Cincinnati, winning three in a row for the first time. And here is the lineup that Kane and the Giants will face off with. Brought to you by Honda. It has John Peterson at the top of it. Then it's Corey Seager hitting second. Yasmani Grandal for the first time, not just this year, but in his time with the Dodgers, bats third. Cody Bellinger, the cleanup man. And it's Puig hitting fifth. Chase Utley at first base again with the right hander on the mound. And it's Taylor and Hernandez. Justin Turner getting the scheduled off day. Start number eight for Kane. And really, he had the one start where he gave up nine runs in three innings at Cincinnati. But other than that, he's been really good. And that includes shutting the Dodgers out over six innings here in late April. Completely different pitcher than we're used to seeing. No more fastball slider cutter. Fastball curveball. And it's a two seamer. His fastball average is below 90 miles an hour. So he's trying to sink it and make you hit the ball on the ground. The Dodgers need to make him get the ball up. Dodgers 14 and 6 in their last 20 games. That's tied for the best record in the majors during that run with St. Louis and Houston. Starting the night, a game and a half back of the Rockies, and off we go with strike one. Jocko for three yesterday with a walk, scored a run. Takes this one inside, and it's one and one. Dodgers splitting the four games in Colorado. Dropped the opener. One games two and three. And then lost the finale yesterday. A breaking ball is lifted to left center. A long run for Span. He's not going to get there. And Peterson starts the game with a double. Chuck has one home run this year. It was on the second pitch of the season that he saw. No power since then. They're just slipping on this ball that he blisters to the left center gap over Span's head. He's looking to get hot, and maybe it can happen here in San Francisco. So Peterson in scoring position to start the night for Corey Seeger. Kane misses away, ball one. Corey, a first inning homer yesterday. His sixth of the year. Highest launch angle on a home run for the Dodgers this year. It was an absolute skyscraper. Down and in, two balls, no strikes. Matt Kane has had two rough outings. The other five have been stellar. 13 of the 18 earned runs he's given up have been in two outings. Home with a 2 0. That's at the bottom of the zone for a strike. The longest tenured giant 
by quite a stretch by four years he's been here for 13 years now. It's a three time all star in his first seven seasons but the last four years well below league average as he's dealt with a ton of different injuries. Jock at second nobody out and Kane to Seeger with a 2 1 ball three. Matt Kane has not fared very well against left handed hitters especially the quality of a Corey Seager doesn't like to throw a lot of strikes to them has a tendency to pick like he is in this at bat. Had one to hit and fouled it off full count. You see the respect right there going with a 3 1 breaking ball first base open no out here in the first inning knowing that Seager can really hurt you. He either wants to try and get him out on his pitch or let him stand over at first base. With Grandall on deck after the leadoff double from Peterson. Kane home with a 3 2 and Seager fouls it off. Giants have done a good job against Seager this year. Four hits and 27 ABs, but two of them have been home runs. He's made it count when he has collected hits against the rival. Another 3 2. Strike three down the middle. So one gone and here comes Yasmani Grandal as we look at our Land Rover performance spotlight as the longest active streak in the National League right now hitting 484 over an eight game hitting streak. Matt Kane likes to keep the ball down the sinker but Yasmani Grandal is swing right now is grooved for the low pitch. Goes after the first one. It's a high fly ball to left center field. Denard Span there for this one. And one pitch to get Grandall. Peterson still at second, two away. Kane really got a chance now to strand Peterson at second with two out here in the first. Dodgers not able to advance him with the Seeger strikeout and now the flyout. There's a tough customer at the plate. A young man that just burst onto the scene though. In this ballpark. Debuted in late April and the Dodgers since then. Have gone 13 and 5. That's the best in baseball. Peterson at second with two away. And Cody Bellinger. Taking ball one. Got his first big league hit here. It's a swinging bunt up along the left side of the infield. In front of his friends and his family. They were in attendance from Arizona. And has done nothing but hit since that arrival. Fastball away, and he's ahead of Kane 2 0. After the fly out to center, Buster Posey swung by the mound and had a little chat, and I think it was about avoiding this young man at the plate. Making sure that every pitch is either on the corners or a ball. With Puig on deck. Kane's 2 0. Upstairs, ball three. I'm staring down at Bruce Bochy, looking if he's just going to give the sig signal to put Cody on. It's a long way to battle back. 3 0 with a powerful left handed hitter with a righty on deck. Green light, 3 and 1. Cody cheating right there. He was swinging as soon as he saw the white flash from Kane's hand. It wasn't about looking for a location, it was just sitting on fastball and cutting it loose. Stocked in more runs than any player in baseball here in May. 17 of them. Has an opportunity here in the first and on a 3 1 he fouls it off and the count goes full and Kane has a chance to strand a lead off double. With Seager he slowed him down with a 3 1 breaking ball a 3 2 breaking ball and then came back after the foul ball with an inside fastball that ran right down the middle. 
here Bellinger has seen two fastballs in a row. Will he throw him the 3 2 curveball? Completely opposite pattern. Tailing fastball got him. And the Dodgers waste a leadoff double against Kane in the first. Degree day as Bruce Bochy's team comes to bat for the first time and here's the starting lineup brought to you by Honda. It's a different look than when the Dodgers saw them a few weeks ago because Denard Span and Brandon Crawford are back off of the disabled list. Span hits lead off. Crawford gives Posey protection in the five spot. Then it's Nunez the rookie Arroyo and Mac Williamson making his season debut in right field. Against Brandon McCarthy, who's off of the 10 day DL for his sixth start. Brandon is best when he attacks, and listen to this stat. Almost 90% of the time, he throws two strikes to every hitter in the first three pitches. The best in the big leagues. Goes to work against Denard Span, who looks at a strike. You know, one of the highest first pitch strike percentages in baseball, been a big part of his success this year. He begun the year 3 0 with an ERA around 3. Span has been a revelation for the Giants since returning this weekend. Pops this one in foul ground. Kike Hernandez drifting back towards the diamond and making the catch for out number one. Kike getting the start of the hot corner today. Justin Turner is scheduled day off. And with one out, here's Joe Panic. We talked about Span being huge for this offense. With him and Brandon Crawford coming back in the order, the Giants over the weekend won three games in a row against Cincinnati, and in the finale yesterday, matched a season high by scoring eight runs. Strike one on Panic. The Giants getting healthy start to look like the Giants. And with the way their record is, these guys need to play consistent ball to get back in the race. Ball on a strike. Yeah, they, even with the three game winning streak, have the third worst record in the National League. Better only than Atlanta and San Diego. One and two, sneaky fast at 93. Throws the two seamer and the cutter. And those two fastballs alone are hard to hit because they go in opposite directions. Then you mix in that outstanding curveball he's had. That's why he's off to the hot start. Two quick outs. He gets his first punch out of the game, courtesy of Joe Panic. Take a look at the Audi pitch cast right here. Fastball up the ladder above the strike zone, but needing to protect. The eyes light up when it's up there, but it is really hard to hit. 
So McCarthy that 10 day stint on the disabled list but he went kicking and screaming he wanted to pitch injured his non throwing shoulder during a regular weight routine between starts and said he was ready to go but he played it cautiously and they can with the 10 day disabled list in baseball this year. That's a ball on Brandon Bell. Left side of your delivery is just as important as your right arm. You have to have a great pitching arm but the left side your left leg your landing leg and your front arm stabilize the delivery. Yank down the right field line and foul. It's one and one. So would you if you were feeling pain in your left shoulder would really affect the way you pitched. Well it could because yeah, if your left arm starts to drop early or doesn't have strength in it it'd be like cracking a whip but having no butt end of the whip. There's nothing there to crack it with so now it's all arm that you're throwing with and you're not getting any leverage. You know ultimately what you're doing with the front side of your body is you're moving it down the hill you're landing then you're stopping it, the, the, your whole body with the front side so the back side can get through it's like cracking the whip. Hard hit Chase Utley's got it Brandon McCarthy has a one two three first inning and in his return from the DL after one in San Francisco no score. One of the best traveling fan bases in all of Major League Baseball has made their presence felt here at AT&T Park. Pantone 294 is here in full force, you guys. Over 900 fans made their way from Los Angeles to San Francisco. Five different buses carrying the best group of traveling fans I've ever seen in my time covering this sport. Pantone night at Dodger Stadium is May 27th. Angel Stadium, June 28th. Miami Marlins on July 15th. San Diego on September 2nd. Best way for fans to be a part of this to go be a part of this group go on trips with these guys follow them on social media at Pantone 294 they have a lot of events coming up no commitment required no membership required just a tremendous fan base and a lot of fun kudos to them for traveling so well falling a strike on Puig yeah it's really awesome I mean we've seen this at several different spots over the years two and one but I don't think we've seen it like this and the best part about it is that it's as deep as you can get in enemy territory. <laughs> yes. In this case. Kane to Puig with a 2 1, and Yasiel takes ball three. And it's already, you can feel it agitating some of the Giants fans in attendance. Who are you in the blue, and who do you think you are? <laughs> well, every Giant hitter gets to stare out the center field and see blue on either side of the batter's eye. So they'll be reminded that they're in their home park but there's a lot of Dodger fans here every time they step to the plate. 
Puig walks against Kane to open the second. Dodgers will try and take advantage of the leadoff man reaching. They were unable to in the first inning when Peterson doubled to open the game. Now Chase Utley, one of the hottest Dodger hitters. And the best Dodger hitter against Matt Kane historically. Look at those numbers, mostly coming when he was in a Phillies uniform. These two guys have been around a long time. Chase in his 15th year in the majors, Kane in his 13th. Both multiple All Star trips. Utley pulls the first pitch into a double play. So he stays locked in, but an Adam ball and a double play, two out. Got this right on the barrel, squared it up, and right to Brandon Belt. Nothing Yasiel can do. You're out on this play no matter what. So they're wiped clear and two gone for Chris Taylor. Kane misses, ball one. So even though Taylor has started to struggle some as far as the average, just four hits in his last 26 ABs, as you saw a moment ago, he's reached in 13 straight. Takes a ball and it's 2 0. And Chris has said that the walks have come from the hits. The more hits that he's gotten, the more he's scared pitchers out of the zone. And he's been seeing the ball so well that he's taken those pitches for the most part. Bouncing ball wide of third, two and one. Even though there haven't been many hits of late, he still looks very comfortable in the box. Has not looked lost at all. Using the same mechanics, the same approach. I really like the way he looks, no matter what. No matter the average plummeting or not. I like him in the lineup. Brings a lot to the team defensively with his speed and the range he has shown on three one gets a pitch to pound and does a two out single for Chris Taylor and barreled that one off the way that he was doing it so consistently in his first few weeks he does not miss this three one fastball this ball is elevated it's one to nothing ball is just absolutely ripped So the Dodgers with their third base runner over the first one and two thirds against Kane and up comes Kike Hernandez. Another guy whose at bats have looked pretty good lately. Dave Roberts in particular has spoken about how much he's liked the look of Kike in the box lately. Matt Kane has a lot of run on his fastball today and it could run if he's going away but run all the way back to the inner half or down the middle and that will be right in Kike's sweet spot. Two for five in the series in Denver. Doubled twice he walked twice. And waits on the first one from Kane. Strike one. Not a lot of juice on the mound as far as getting it by you with velocity. 89 is about where Kane will max out, 89 or 90. So guys will not be intimidated in covering the outside corner. Thirty third start against the Dodgers for Matt Kane. That's more than. Any pitcher in baseball has made against any other team in baseball. PK fouls it off the end of the bat. A long run for Mac Williamson, and he runs out of room. It's 0 and 2. It's the most starts for any Giants pitcher against the Dodgers since Juan Marichal in the 1960s and 70s, who eventually came over to the Dodgers at the end of his career. Pretty much a full season against the Dodgers and yeah. now six and eleven with a three point four two not including tonight of course. Ball one. 
Held the Dodgers off of the board on April 24th. Just two hits against him in that game. Would have kept going, but had some hamstring tightness. So they pulled him out just to be cautious. That's his last win. Two and two. He has not gone over 92 pitches, and the Dodgers already have two hits. So second time around, they've seen him. They've watched the video from that game. They've watched all his other starts coming into this. A lot more information for the lineup. 32 year old fires over to first as Taylor diving back in. He was born in Alabama, Dothan, Alabama. Moved to Memphis when he was 10 years old and grew up there. His 2 2 is low and away, and a good take from Kike means that Chris Taylor will get a head start on the next one. The pitcher on deck. Okay, not giving Kike anything too juicy. There he goes. Here it comes, and it's popped up. We'll do it again. Watching the guys track some of these fly balls and pop ups, the wind must be swirling because they are not running direct routes to where they are possibly going to catch the ball. We were down on the field for batting practice and I was asking the guys as they hit balls over the wall or they fell short in certain areas. Hey did you get that one. No I didn't get it. Hey did you get that one. Yeah I got that one pretty good but it didn't get it out. But it, every group it seemed like the wind would shift. Also known as Monday in San Francisco. <laughs> Fouled back or a day ending in Y in San Francisco. Uh, Every time I pitched in San Francisco I would check with my fielders and we would have hand signs with all my outfielders about what the wind was doing. So if they put their hand behind their head it was blowing out if they put their hand in front of their face it was blowing in. And if they put their palms up <laughs> par for the course it's swirling. <laughs> Here's another three two and another foul ball. That's Jack Peterson during BP today. Jock what flags do you use here. And he said none of them. Yeah. Yeah. Cody Bellinger said he uses the old tried and true method of throwing some grass in the air. That'll at least tell you what it's doing around your body, but the, by ball's the time not the there. ball gets there, <laughs> yeah. The ball might not be around your body. Let's read that trash blowing behind home plate. <laughs> Looks like the wind is blowing in. Another payoff. And a bouncing ball to third. This will be a long throw for Arroyo, and it's dug out by Belt to end the inning. Dodgers get a couple of base runners, but no damage against Kane. And no score, middle two.
ballpark. Probably a little bit colder out there. Such a nice setting for a ball game here in San Francisco. First of three between the teams this week. Meeting number eight so far this season with the Giants winning for the first seven. And in typical Dodger Giant fashion, four of the seven have been decided by a run. Three of the seven have gone to extras. Scalding hot, Buster Posey. Nine hits in his last six games. That includes four home runs. Brandon McCarthy goes to work. And Posey shoots the first pitch on the ground to short. They get him on one out. And we welcome you inside our broadcast booth, Joe and Oral. And these are always special games. But again, when you add in the Pantone 294, the yeah. thousand people they have here, it adds to an already great environment. It is a great environment because you're going to have both sides going back and forth. And we've heard some boos and some cheering trying to drown them out already. It's an awful lot of fun to. Uh, Feel almost like a college football game a little bit at times. We had a marching band do the uh, national anthem. That's yep. what I was thinking too. Here's Crawford. That's a strike. Crawford missed a couple of weeks with a groin injury, and there are a couple guys you could make the case for for this, but he really is one of the hearts and souls of this team. So his return has been big in the four games he's been back. Ball on a strike, even though the numbers haven't been fantastic for him, just his presence both defensively and being in that lineup card has been big for San Francisco. Talking to Mike Kruko, one of the giant announcers, he said, you know what? He didn't get a hit in two games, but he won them both for us with his glove, with his energy, moving runners over. He's a huge impact player and comes right back in the lineup to protect their hottest bat, Buster Posey. McCarthy downhill to him with a 1 2, and a breaking ball bounces. Count evens. Crawford, 30 years old, in his seventh major league season. He signed through 2021, like a lot of the core pieces are for the Giants. He and Belton Posey, all long term deals. Ripped to first and caught by Utley, who climbs the ladder to take a hit away. In the same way, Brandon Belt took one from him. Take a look at our slow mo with Kona. And I'll tell you what, this ball was not hit slowly, and Chase Utley got up in a hurry. A couple little stutter steps to get a read on it, and then some elevation to grab it. Glad he has the first baseman's glove that's a little longer than his second baseman's glove, of course. So five up and five down for McCarthy. And Eduardo Nunez looks at a tailing fastball for ball one. Chase has been carrying his own first baseman's glove for the last few years. 25 starts over there prior to this season over his first 14 years. It's fouled back. It's one and one. Hadn't started there though since his first month with the Dodgers after he was acquired in August of 2015. But he said you never know. So he began carrying that first baseman's glove with him all the time. Two and one. In my day, I used to have a first baseman's glove in my bag. Did you really? Not for the same purpose. Because during infield practice, during batting practice, they'd ask sometimes for somebody to go over there and shag at first. They're turning double plays. They're working on throwing across the diamond. So I got a first baseman's glove just to have some fun. That's the oral I know and love. It was really fun. Why do it if you're not going to try to do it well? To do it right. <laughs> Get a first baseman's glove, break it in. <laughs> for BP. Yep. A 3 1. Strike two. We'll see Kenley Jansen out there during BP on the infield taking grounders. You see Clayton Kershaw scampering around taking grounders, having fun. It's good to do the things that you used to do when you're a little kid. Barely got a piece here. We'll do the 3 2 again. There's Clayton, a little less energy than Colorado. Didn't see him sitting down much there. Probably tried to stay warm here in San Francisco. 
He was off the wall this weekend. Mm, a little energy throwing the ball against the wall. That backs up but finds the corner. And six up, six down for Brandon McCarthy in a scoreless game. On Thursday after the post game show Jock Peterson visits the Rams facility Adrian Gonzalez and Dave Roberts go to Dubai for an offseason kids clinic backstage Dodgers presented by Hankook tires Thursday after the post game show 9 1 and 2 for the Dodgers Brandon McCarthy taking ball one from Matt Kane. so this will be interesting to see because the shoulder that McCarthy hurt in the weight room is the front shoulder Takes inside here and it's 2 and 0 and that would take the brunt of the swing. Yeah, he, he was taking some BP not full full swings but he was testing it throughout the last week and it looked like he was going to be OK. It's not something that all of a sudden you want to get in the cage and take 50 swings. Actually the day that he was DL he was headed out to the cage <laughs> before he found out he was DL 2 and 2. So he felt confident in it. Right. But they were definitely being very cautious and uh, Brandon was went to the DL kind of kicking and screaming pops this one to right Mac Williamson is there one out an area usually roamed by Hunter Pence who went on the DL a little slight hamstring pull they don't think it'll be any more than the 10 days second time to the Dodge order now here's Peterson Regardless of how long it is though you know the Giants have to be rolled in their eyes at another injury all three of their starting outfielders to open the year have spent time on the disabled list with Pence down Jared Parker their opening day left fielder still out that's a curve and a strike on one broke his clavicle a couple of weeks into the season then Art span we mentioned just came back he had been out with a shoulder injury. One and one. And it's not just the outfield. Their closer, Mark Melanson, is on the shelf right now with a forearm issue. You know about Bumgarner. They're saying now, not until August for his return. Even before the season started, you had Will Smith, who was supposed to be their setup man for Melanson. Hurt the elbow. Tommy John surgery. He'll miss the year. It's two and one. And Peterson pops it into the seats two and two. Also had Buster Posey missed time with a concussion. We mentioned Crawford down with a groin. And even the manager even Bruce Bochy missed a couple of games having a heart procedure. Their pets heads are falling off. 
<laughs> With one out and a scoreless third, Peterson asked for time. Fouls it back, we'll do it again. You know, talking of the injuries, Hunter Pence not out there. They have a total of two home runs out there in the outfield tonight. That's their center fielder who's got them both. Only five home runs from their whole outfield. It's just been anemic as far as production for the Giants outfield. And overall, last in the majors in homers. Peterson swats it to left. Nunez is there. And as a reflection of the trickle down from those injuries, Nunez was supposed to be the everyday third baseman, but has turned into the everyday outfielder and left. And so, not a huge surprise when you see the Giants at 15 and 24. At least, not a huge surprise seeing them struggling. Maybe a bit of a surprise that the struggles have been that grand. Two gone for Seeger. Strike one. And when did the news come out that Madison Bumgarner is not coming back till August? Yeah, That's that. a long time to wait for that guy. They initially sent four to six weeks, which would have made it early June. That's bounced off the mound and into center. Seeger has a two out single. And they moved it back to around the All Star break. But as these things often go, keep getting bumped back and bumped back. And keep that in mind as we even put. An early August date on it. That's no guarantee. You don't need Matt Cain to get hurt as he takes that one off his right thigh. And Madison Bumgarner on such a hometown deal that you know they would have the ability to actually release him and nullify the contract because of what's in the basic agreement and how he got hurt when the dirt bike accident of his own doing. But they don't want to lose Madison Bumgarner and let him be a free agent. Grandall bats with two away. And it takes a ball. And when uh, the day that happened, we looked up the CBA. We at least found a Cubs contract, some things that they can't do that are detailed in the contract. Obviously, riding a dirt bike is one of them. So is skiing. So is martial arts activity. Jiu-jitsu. Pick, pick up basketball. Some basic things, yeah. Obviously, spelunking. Well, for sure. Yeah. Archery. Don't even think about hang gliding or wood chopping. It's yep. all in there. Yep. Fly ball right center field. Williamson running back on it into the deepest part of the park. Won't get there. Corey Seager heads home and Grandall has given the Dodgers the lead with a double. And the hit streak now nine for number nine. There's a long road out there to get to this ball, but he doesn't get to it. Yasmani has been swinging a very hot bat turned on this ball, and that is way out there. 421 to right center here. So when they don't catch this ball, but it lands on grass, don't think that ball wasn't crushed. Probably hit about 390. And listen to Pantone 294 enjoying the one nothing lead. Bellinger attacks the first pitch strike one. He was rounding second Grandall was with the thought of. Going to third if you're wondering he has three career triples. Came to Bellinger with an 0 1. Tailing fastball puts him ahead 0 2. Picks up Chris Woodward. And as you often tell us, you don't want to make the first out, you don't want to make the third out at third. Call it triples alley for a reason out there though. Even Yasmani Grandall borderline had a shot. Two 
Two and two. Kane struck Bellinger out his first time. Tailed a fastball over the inside part of the plate to get him. You can hear the wind howling at this point. Too bad you can't hear which direction. You certainly can't see with the flags. Full count. Matt Kane has been attempting and executing that fastball into the lefties. Jock Peterson got one. Corey Seager's gotten one. Bellinger's gotten a few right here. Trying to throw it at their front hip and have it tail back onto the corner. Here's a 3 2, and Bellinger down swinging. But the Dodgers get the game's first run, and a grand all double scoring Seeger all the way from first. by the Ram 1500 Rebel. Experience the power and toughness of Ram at your local dealer and by Jack in the Box. Come try the new guacamole and bacon chicken sandwich only at Jack in the Box. A lot of all-star appearances of those three guys combined. That's last year in San Diego. Kershaw, Bumgarner, Arietta. Corey Seager with a two out single to keep the last inning going and then Yasmani Grandal followed by doubling to the deepest part of the yard to begin the scoring. Joe Davis or Hershiser Alana Rizzo and Christian Arroyo. Like Cody Bellinger made his debut in this series last time these teams met up in this ballpark. And for a time injected some life into the Giants. But it's come back down to earth some. Flips this one foul quickly behind 0-2. They say that he started to expand his zone. He's chasing more than when he first arrived and comes in four for his last 25. Yeah, speaking to the people around the Giants, they're saying he's still on his back leg as far as weight and balance, and he looks like he has a nice swing. It's just getting strikes not chasing got one there one out a little mental discipline from the young fellow thinking I'm not going to chase but Brandon McCarthy snuck this one back off the edge to the corner got the call he's retired the first seven and showing no rust at all after that 10 days stay on the disabled list here's Mac Williamson for his 2017 big league debut Strike one, two seam diving in towards his feet. 
each one of Brandon McCarthy's fastballs are hard to hit. The cutter, the velocity in the movement, and the two-seamer, when he's got them both going, it could be devastating. I mean, and then the curveball has really had a lot of break to help him change speeds. Is 1-1. One, one. Williamson tries to lay off. Can't. 1-2. and two. You can just see right there how hard it is on a hitter when he threw the first pitch two-seamer that ended up inside at like 93. That curveball looked like that pitch, and it was going to come in. No, it went low and away, and it was a lot slower. Is 1-2. Evens the count up two balls and two strikes. There's a great article out right now. We talked about kind of the evolution of Brandon McCarthy over his career. But Eno Saris for Fangraphs wrote one that breaks down his evolution. Just misses with this one and the count goes full. Kind of been different versions of Brandon McCarthy as his 12 year big league career has rolled on. And you could make an argument that there is no version better than the one you're seeing right now. Base hit to right. First base run over the game for the Giants. Mac Williamson with a one out single. That brings up Kane in a bunt situation with the top of the order coming up. Phil Nevin, first year as the third base coach. Like Yasmani wanted the high cutter to see if they can get him to pop up this bunt attempt. Stabs at it, strike one. Brandon wanted the two seamer. in front of the plate Grandall will throw Kane out and the scoring position goes Williamson to gone nice sacrifice Matt Kane just executed doesn't really matter about the angle if you get the exact weight of it so he just deadens it out in front of home plate with very aggressive defense you see on the corners they're pinching Brandon would be the slowest guy because he has to throw the ball first and then break in. So sometimes that dead and bunt back to the pitcher, pretty good place for it. So it's up to Span here with two gone. Span in his first two games off of the DL this weekend went seven for 12 and homered twice. This is not a guy that hits many homers. Ball one. He comes back from the sprained shoulder and is suddenly Babe Ruth. They asked him, how is this happening? And he said, well, look, guys, I was on the DL for a few weeks. I didn't go to Cabo. <laughs> Spent a lot of time tracking side sessions, just standing in during guys' bullpens, keeping his sights. 2-0. and and then when the team went on its latest road trip, Span went to Arizona. Albert Suarez, one of the rehabbing pitchers down there, took live BP against him. And Brandon McCarthy on the mound is the one that got Chase Utley hot in his sim game, getting ready for this start. Chase got some extra at bats. First multi hit game of the year after playing in a sim game, and then all of a sudden starting that night, Chase did it both and Got a lot of hits in both. Williamson at second, two gone here in the third inning. Giants trying to answer the Dodger run from the top of this inning with their first of the night. 
Dodgers got theirs with two outs on a double from Grandall, scoring Seeger, who had singled himself with two out. Playing in this ballpark with the wind, and not many big innings are given up. A lot of strategy going into two outs and a base open. Cracks his bat on a roller to long first, two and two. Giants play a lot of close games in this park because it doesn't lend itself to offense. So even in this situation early in the game, you're thinking about this could be the difference between a win and a loss preventing this run. They are grinding it out. Bernard Spann, 33 years old, been in the majors a decade. Second year with San Francisco. Former twin, former national. Batting with a tie and run in scoring position here in the third. A little blooper, short left field. Seeger out. This game is tied. Bernard Spann with a teardrop base hit to left to even the issue at one. They did everything they could to make sure the Giants didn't know what pitch was coming. They changed the signs, went with no look. They did a fake target of low and then came up and in. And still Span found a way with a jam shot to get some outfield grass and an RBI. They really thought through how to get him out, executed a proper pitch, got it hit poorly, but it just found a hole. Joe Panic. Strike one. Here we are on May 15th, and it feels like October 15th in here. That's what a rival reel do. Mm. You, know, you get the energy going. You get a lot of Dodger fans in the enemy territory. A long history. All the way back to New York. 2,456 all time meetings. Fouled off by Panic in its own two. So they've played almost 2,500 times, and in the all time series, they're separated by 34 games. 1,236 wins for the Giants. 1,202 wins for the Dodgers. Some of those courtesy of the Bridegrooms and the Robins. Some of them courtesy of the Gothams. Giants have dominated in recent years here, though. They've won 8 of 10 in this ballpark each of the last two seasons. They have the three most recent world championship rings out of the two. It's a lot of fun to play in this rivalry. The intensity is tremendous and you feed off the fans and the energy that comes from the, all the people around watching you. Ball one. The players will downplay it in the media, but there's an intensity that's different than the other regular season games. How weird was it being on the other side at the end? It was a little bit odd, just kind of like Sergio Romo has gone through. Dusty Baker went through it as a manager. And a lot of different people put both uniforms on. Dusty was a guy who grew up in Southern California listening to Vin Scully as a Dodger fan. Count evens up on panic with a runner at first and two gone. McCarthy struck panic out his first time. That's one of the three K's for Brandon. Now he's home with a 2 2. And he checks his swing but gets a piece. 
Bannock in his fourth year in the big so his fourth year in this rivalry. Big league debut in June of 2014 and then was the starting second baseman for that World Series run. Look at that hair. Looks like he's about 12 years old. <laughs> Bounce softly to first and Chase Utley will step on the bag to end the inning. But the Giants tied against McCarthy on a two out base hit from Span. Kane using the comeback fastball on the inside to get Seeger three and two. Bellinger is first at bat three and two. Bellinger in the middle of the count in his last at bat. And now look at Buster Posey. Wanted to call the same pitch, but checking his feet to make sure he's not making any adjustments. They go with it. Don't get it looking, but sneak it by him. Matt Kane doesn't have the tremendous velocity anymore, but he's got outstanding movement. And to get it inside to the lefties, he throws it at his hip and lets it run back. It's Puig to lead off the Dodger half of the fourth inning in a tie game. Strike one and a breaking ball. Puig walked his first time, but on walk against Kane for the Dodgers so far today. Back to back curves. This one hit foul, and it's 0 and 2. We get him fifth. That's the highest in the order that he's hit this month. But mostly seventh and eighth. And a couple of stretches where he's really excelled there. Had a home run yesterday, hoping to break out of what has turned into a bit of a slump for him. That ball's ripped to left, sending Nunez back, but plenty of room for the first out. Find out if you're a Dodger good luck charm and purchase a five game weekend plan starting at just twenty dollars a ticket. If the Dodgers win all five games that you pick. You win two tickets to fan appreciation day in September and you get recognized in a group photo on the field. You can go to Dodgers.com slash mini plans to learn more. That's some of the folks in Pantone 294 taking advantage of that. Jay Zutley. Hit it hard his first time, but a line drive was caught at first by Belt. Ball one. Do you think there's somebody at home saying what is Pantone 294? Could be. So it's the official color of Dr. Oh, Blue. that, right, right. Like, why is that? Yeah, why did they call themselves mm -hmm. that? Yeah, so if you wanted to go to the hardware the store. Exactly. You would ask for Pantone 294 if you wanted to do your walls and. Dodger Blue. You want to do your man cave or your son or daughter's huge Dodger fan? You want to paint the walls of their bedroom Dodger Blue? Get some Pantone 294. Hotley's ahead of Kane 3 0. 
has mastered Kane in previous meetings. Four home runs against him, hitting close to 400. Kane in the final year of his deal here in San Francisco. Club does have an option for next year, and as he's been one of their better starters early this year, and there's been some talk about the Giants perhaps bringing him back. Utley shows Bunn and takes ball four. Second walk issued by Kane and the Dodgers with a one out base runner. One of the issues for the Giants this year has been the starting pitching. Guys that they were counting on to be one of the best rotations in the majors. They're 24th in the big leagues and earned run average from their starters. Big part of that obviously Bumgarner being down. But Jeff Samarja, Matt Moore, they both have ERAs above five. Even Kane and Cueto, ERAs above four. A ball on Chris Taylor. I would think they are most disappointed in Bumgarner's injury and Matt Moore's performance has really been off. Madison there supporting his teammates, but he can't do it on the field. And there's Matt Moore to his left. He's really been off his game. One and one. More for me at, at times just looks completely lost on the mound. He'd go from like mowing people down to all of a sudden he just can't find it at all. Spiking balls, throwing balls over the catcher's head almost. Just like all of a sudden he's too much in his head, nothing doing nothing naturally. Hanging breaking ball dumb back one and two. I'm not sure I've ever seen somebody go from one end of the spectrum to the other so drastically as Matt Moore has in his starts against the Dodgers since coming to the Giants last year. Lost a no hitter with two outs in the ninth inning in his first outing against L.A. The next time had the worst start of his career gave up six runs in one inning. But it doesn't end there. Two and two. Final day of the regular season last year he pitched the Giants into the postseason against the Dodgers going eight innings. But then the last time we saw him he gave up more runs than any San Francisco pitcher has against the Dodgers since the teams moved west. A 2 2 Otley runs Taylor bounces one right into a double play. Tied at one, middle four. are in order for left-handed pitcher Alex Wood. Time now for the mini countryman player profile and Alex Wood this morning was named the National League Player of the Week on MLB Network 
in a stretch in which he went 2-0 with 11 scoreless innings versus Pittsburgh and at Colorado. In those two outings, guys, Wood struck out 21, walked just two while limiting batters on the opposition to 175 average. So far this year, 4-0 with a 2-2-7 ERA, and to think this guy started out of the pen this season. Yeah, the numbers he put up in those last two starts, Alana, are unmatched as Brandon Belt takes a strike against McCarthy. Third time in Major League history that a pitcher has had back-to-back -back 10K or better games without pitching deeper than the six. Third time in baseball history. Ball on a strike on Belt. Andy Bennis in 2000. John Lester in 2010. Alex Wood in 2017. Two and one. I think he's going to be a dark horse to make the All Star team. If he can keep it up, he mixes in a loss or so, big deal. But if he gets the eight, nine, ten wins with a couple losses with an ERA under two and a half, Clayton Kershaw is on that path right now with the low ERA and six wins, but four wins and started out in the bullpen. He's got a chance to put his name. Right up near the top, if he can keep going. Belt muscles one up the middle that Seeger can't get to. And another softly hit base hit for San Francisco. They are not hitting it hard. They are not finding the barrel, but the handle or off the end of the bat is working just fine. He hit that one with a sporting news. No chance. They still print those. I know it's a it's a great website. But yeah, for my day, it, you know, we talk about people would roll them up, and and that's why how it why it's hit so softly. But yeah, I think they still print them. Runner at first for Posey, and a two seam in there for a strike. We're fortunate enough to, to ride on the Dodger Charter, so we don't get to go through the airports and go to the newsstand to see if they're there very often. I'm in there a fair amount. I don't remember seeing many. Okay, so maybe they don't print it yeah. anymore. Posey grounded his short his first time. Ball on a strike here. Buster changed his swing a little bit recently. Leg kick had gotten huge. And just try to lower that some. Much smaller leg kick that he's using. He said it's a feel thing and not saying that he won't go and go back at some point to having a big leg kick but feels good with a smaller leg kick now time is called his belt took off for second and so he showed his hand and the big man has to go back with nothing to show for that burst Posey was asking for time with just his mouth wasn't raising his hand taking it off the bat like a lot of players do so time was given long before Brandon Belt broke. That's why it looked like he had such a big jump. You see Posey time, time, time. All right, he gets it. A lot of guys will take their hand off the bat and wave to the umpire's face, but then all of a sudden the ball's coming. They don't have their hands on the bat. Buster knows he doesn't like that style. Gerald Dempster. Posey the third. Looks like he is fighting the wind into his eyes. It didn't look like all of a sudden he had problems and needed time. It looked like, yeah, he's he's having some issues with his eyes because of the wind or his contacts. It's supposed to be gusty all series here. Here's the one, two. Line drive to right center. Posey with a base hit. And the Giants have them at first and second with nobody out. His vision might be a little blurry, but his swing is perfect. Water in your eyes, get a good blink, see the ball, and have a swing like Buster Posey. Now he's talking about his eyes right now. Can't be a comfortable feeling standing up there against 
any major league pitcher and your eyes not feeling good. Two on, nobody out. Here's Crawford. We were talking with the Giants broadcasters before the game. You guys all talking about moments in your careers where you simply did not see pitches coming? For sure. A few from Nolan Ryan, a few from Dwight Gooden. Crawford waited back on a breaking ball, sprayed it foul. It's not a very comfortable feeling. Don't imagine. Especially when you think it might have been headed towards your head or your body. It's one thing that you blink through or don't see a fastball away or a breaking ball that falls off the table and you just don't see the second half of it. But when you feel like at the release point or what you thought was a release point, the ball's coming towards you, it doesn't feel real good at all. Grandall stops it. Runners hold. It's one and one. I was in a 0 0 tie with Nolan Ryan in about the fifth inning and made the mistake as I let off the inning to attempt a bunt for a hit. And the ball went foul. The next ball was right at my head. Somebody reminded me you're not supposed to bunt for a hit <laughs> off Nolan Ryan. That somebody didn't need to remind me after I had the ball <laughs> thrown at my head. Yeah, last time you did that. Base hit down the line, and the Giants will take the lead. Belt in to score on a double from Crawford, and it's 2 1. This could have been an amazing double play, but this ball just eats up Chase Utley at first. It was just scorched. A one hopper gets by him. It deflects off the glove. It ends up being a rally and a run for the Giants. And this Pantone 294 group has obviously given the Dodgers a charge being here. But I think what it's also done is charged up these Giants fans, which haven't had much to cheer about this season. They're the third worst record in the National League at 15 and 24. Second and third, still nobody out, and it's Eduardo Nunez. Nunez breaks his bat on a wall ball that sneaks through for another base hit. Here's the throw home. McCarthy doesn't realize that Crawford's hung up and everybody's safe. Brandon McCarthy ends up right where he probably would end up no matter how this is played out because you usually go to back up home or back up third after you see the ball get through you break. Once he sees this glove he ends up in the middle of the diamond and it's rarely does a pitcher ever end up with it there. And of course he reacts to what's right in front of him but what's going on behind him is Brandon Crawford would have been caught in a rundown between third and home. But no they don't get anybody. Throw a single with two RBIs for Nunez. And the Giants lead it 4 1. Rick Honey cut out to the mound to talk with McCarthy. He retired the first seven that he faced, but the Giants have six hits over the last one plus. Brandon Crawford's hit was hit hard. The rest of this has been very weak stuff. Defense has not been shaky, but it could have been better. Christian Arroyo. Nunez runs on ball one and no throw. Team leading 10 stolen base of the year for him. Nunez taking advantage of a rattled pitcher out there, really just concentrating, trying to get an out. And one looked him and took advantage of the distractions that have been going on this inning. Two and out. Infield in. Two and one. Arroyo trying to elevate it, make it a five-one game. 
One of the things they like about him is his maturity, his knowledge of the game. Only 21 years old, the youngest San Francisco position player in six years. McCarthy's fallen behind him 3 0. Three and one. Made his big league debut less than four years after high school. Giants drafted him in the first round, 2013. He's committed to play at Florida, but decided to sign with the Giants and quickly climb the system. Another foul ball, still full count. And he shed some shed some tears in the Triple-A manager's office when he got the news, and the first thing he did was call his mom. She thought he was lying. Took him five minutes to convince her that it was true. He was headed to the show, and then she wouldn't stop crying. Pounded to right, Puig is there, but this will have Nunez headed for the plate, and Puig's throw not quite in time. Zach Fly plates the fifth giant run, but this is impressive even though the run scores. Look at the accuracy and the strength of this throw. And that's through the wind with a line drive that puts you on your heels with only one step. He's absolutely amazing. With an average runner, that is really close. Mm. But Nunez is as fast as anybody in baseball and able to get in there ahead of it. Mac Williamson looks at a strike. So the Giants offense coming alive the last couple days. Second last in the majors in runs per game. But they matched a season high with eight yesterday. And they already have five in this one. Williamson to third. Picked off by Hernandez. Two out. Other than Hunter Pence going on the DL today with the hamstring, the Giants getting healthy compared to when the Dodgers last saw them. This is a little bit more like Giant baseball. When they do the little things, when they take advantage of mistakes, when they press you on the bases. It's a different brand of baseball when they play in this ballpark. It's Kane. He swings away, strike one. Giants in this ballpark against the Dodgers. 18 and six over the last two plus seasons. Half of those games, though, more than half of those games have been decided by just one run. When they win those close games and they win them like from the seventh inning on, you start to feel like, oh, they've got that it factor. Nomar and I used to talk about that all the time. Like you could just see it in their eyes that they understand how to win games in this ballpark when it's tight. The Dodgers have to find ways to manufacture runs late and get their bullpen to shut them down. McCarthy K's Kane and finishes the Giants fourth, but they bring seven to the plate and score four times to take a 5-1 lead.
Play is brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Toyota time is going on now. Get incredible deals on a fuel efficient RAV4 hybrid. Baseball royalty right here. Koufax and Drysdale taking a look at Willie Mays' bat. Trying to find some secrets in them. They were the three highest paid players in baseball at that time. And Willie Mays, shortly after Jackie Robinson broke in with the Dodgers in 1947, the Dodgers were playing an exhibition game against the Birmingham Black Barons on their way back from spring training. And 16 year old Willie Mays was the best player on that Birmingham team. Dodgers were so impressed by him even when he was 16 years old they actually notified management back up in Brooklyn and said hey got this young kid we might want to take a look at him but Branch Rickey's assistant shot down the idea he thought Willie Mays couldn't hit a curve so wouldn't be worth looking at any longer strike one on Kike bad scouting report yeah not a good one when they were looking at those bats I think they were looking to see if they were corked and Willie probably <laughs> said something like his sense of humor. Willie probably said, no, it's my arms that are corked. Hmm. <laughs> Major League debut 1951. Four years after Jackie broke the color barrier. Matt Cain to Kike Hernandez. And Kike pulls one to short. Caught by Crawford. One out. Long way to go. Five to one, but it's still early. Dave Roberts electing to stick with Brandon McCarthy. Starts him with a two seam, strike one. You talked about the difference in Matt Kane this year versus recent years, first decade or so of his career, the way he's had to evolve. Spins one down and away, and it's one and one. Almost all two seam now for him. One of his first starts this year, Nick Hunley was catching him with Buster Posey on the DL. And he went up to him early on in the start and said, Look, man, the way your two seamer is moving, anytime I put down one finger, meaning fastball, throw the two seam. He gets McCarthy, two out. Buster Posey goes to the clear lens glasses to protect from the wind that is blowing in from center field. Rarely do you see that. Very comforting feeling for a pitcher to feel that much wind at your back, knowing that if you make a mistake, you've got a chance to get knocked down. Jock Peterson doubled his first time, lined to left his second time, and takes the ball. Can it hurt your breaking stuff, though? It can, but if it's if it's at your back and maybe a little left to right or right to left, you can take a ride on the wind. If it's directly in, just throw the four-seam fastball, but <laughs> or leave it up, the two-seamer up, and let them try and turn it around because they won't. How much can you trust what you feel when it's swirling? All right. Blown at about 20 miles per hour consistently right now. That's not just the gust, that's where the consistent wind is at. 2 0, a strike. <laughs> 2 and 2. Can't trust the flags, can't trust the weather vane. What do you trust? Weather.com. Track the ball and hope you can outrun it. Dodgers have had a base runner in every inning so far. A little bit similar to yesterday, though, unable to totally capitalize. They stranded 11 men. The loss to the Rockies to finish up that series in Denver. Stranded five over the first four today. 
Another 2-2. Two -two. Just misses up and Jocks worked it full. Take a look at what Pitchcast thinks of that one. I thought it was a strike, but kind of glad it was a ball. <laughs> See if he can make him pay. Here's a 3-2. Checked his swing. Ball four. Couple of borderline calls that go the Dodgers way. Maybe they can capitalize with two outs here with Corey Seager coming up. He can turn around almost any wind in America with his power. Homered after Peterson walk yesterday. But I do remember a blast or two in Chicago when we were there at Wrigley that knocked down a couple Turner balls and Seager balls. First couple weeks of the season it seemed like every night Seager was having a home run taken away by the wind. Usually to center. Strike one. And a good look at a tailing fastball but missed it. One for two today scored the Dodgers lone run in the third singled with two outs came all the way around in a grand dog double. Good lead for Jock. Seeger rips one that Belt grabs, and the inning is over. That ball gets inside the bag and down the line. A good chance Peterson scores, but Belt with a nice defensive play. Halfway home, 5 1. Number one mobile app for live Dodger baseball. Stay connected with a fully customizable experience. Get Dodger home screen icons and app features as well as game day, live game video highlights, radio broadcast, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Wow. I just deleted mine so I can download it again. <laughs> Firing me up. Top of the Giants order in a 5-1 game in the fifth. And Denard Span looks at ball one from Brandon McCarthy. Span got married this offseason to an Olympian, a women's hockey player named Annie Schepler. Joe's Bunt takes a strike. Proposed on New Year's Eve. They were in Miami. And while they were out to dinner, he set up a call, fake call from the hotel, pretended that they're room had been flooded and soaked all their stuff. 
So they go back to the hotel. They get keys to a new room and surprise her with champagne and rose petals and the whole nine yards after she thought that all their stuff had been ruined in the room that they were in previously. Dropped to a knee, she said yes, and they live happily ever after. <laughs> That's awesome. Chase Zutley. One out. Bunch of these guys got married in the offseason. The guy coming to the plate did as well, Joe Panic. To his high school sweetheart, Brittany. This proposal came in Central Park, and then they were married in New Jersey. Joked around about this last time these teams got together, but kind of similar to those teams in the 1890s that earned the nickname the Bridegrooms in Brooklyn. One and all. Panic from Hopewell Junction, New York originally. Tiny town, about an hour north of New York City. Grew up a big Yankees fan, but grew up in a family full of Giants fans back from the New York Giants days. Chops one to second. Chris Taylor has it eat him up. Can be tough there on the lip of the outfield grass. And panic aboard with one out. Well, that'll be a straight error for E4. Chris Taylor knows he should have had this ball. He's right there on the lip right now. Retreats a little bit because he's got plenty of time being on that side of the infield. The last hop got him. Still hitting dirt and hits the heel of his glove also. So it puts a man on with one gone for Brandon Belt. Belt had an 0 for 18 stretch prior to this recent series against Cincinnati. And it's not like he's necessarily really broken out because the average is still very low over the last several weeks, but he's homered in three of his last four games. All or nothing right now. One of those home runs hit the water beyond the right field wall. Breaks his bat on a little pop that Seeger catches for out number two. Breaks is an understatement. That one got in a little farther than the bloop hit that he got to start the rally last inning. You remember he hit one over Corey Seeger's head the last inning. It didn't shatter the bat that time, but this one ends up in front of Seeger. Splinters. Everywhere. Two gone for Posey. Breaking ball, strike one. Posey's hit last inning was a bullet. That was a legitimate hit. Also, with the double by Brandon Crawford, was hit really hard. Six hits total for the Giants today. What do you think? Two, three, hard hit, two? Yeah, I think two. Yeah. We now, if you're trying to define hard hit, have 95 miles per hour on the exit velocity as that marker. And you can go to that MLB app to find that. Mm -hmm. What's the process? You push. So you go to the game day feed on the app. Yeah. And then you hit the feed tab. It says pitch by pitch, box score, summary, videos across the top. And then feed. You hit feed. You get the launch angle and the velocity and all that. Rolled past the mound is short. Seeger scoops it up, and the Giants finished in the fifth. But they lead 5 1 as we march out of the six.
bullpen options as Dave's team has a five to one deficit here in the top of the sixth inning and just because you were in the postseason last year doesn't necessarily mean you are off to the best start here in 2017 time now for the cores like cold hard facts you can take a look at the teams guys that were in the postseason last season only the Dodgers with the best record at sixth game above 500 record right now the Cleveland Indians three games better at five than 500 and the San Francisco Giants take a look at where they are 15 and 24 not many of the clubs from last season's postseason run off to a good start this year. And Alana, if you take it all the way back to the All-Star break of last season, the Giants have the single worst record in baseball. Three, four, and five against Kane. It's Grandall taking ball one. Giants had the best record in baseball in the first half last year. Remarkably after that, total nosedive. One and one. It was interesting at all star break they weren't healthy but as their regulars came back they actually got worse. So the guys that were actually subbing for the regulars were putting up better numbers than when the regulars got back and were healthy they uh, they took a nosedive never got it together. Flipped into left center field. Span calling it and catching it for the first out. Hence the latest down with an injury. Hamstring. He was out for much of last year with a hamstring injury as well, but it was the other leg. Once an Ironman had the longest streak in the majors as far as games played when he arrived here in San Francisco. First couple years with the Giants, but it's been the opposite of that. Injury plagued the last three seasons. Bellinger. Strike one. Our Iron Man is down, Adrian Gonzalez. And now the Giants' Iron Man has been down. Adrian is getting close to uh, playing some games. Going to play seven innings of first base, I think, tomorrow in A ball, and maybe play two or three before possibly being evaluated to uh, get back in the Dodger uniform here. One and one on Cody. Logan Forsyth is going to DH in that same game. Well, as Yogi Berra used to say, it's getting late early. Kane out there continues to throw that two seamer, and the Dodgers are not pushing anybody across the plate. Two and two. Dodgers against Kane this year. One run. And 11 and a third. Giving up 19 earned runs now and 13 of them only in two outings. So he's either hot or really cold. Count goes full on Bellinger. Can't hit off the old Matt Kane, the reputation or whatever you've seen before. And of course, close Cody has not seen him very much, but the rest of the lineup has. This is a new pitcher. Fouls it back. Made his major league debut and the guy at the plate Cody Bellinger was. Fourth grade. A 21 year old waiting on another 3 2. Ripping one to left. Nunez paused then retreated and made the catch. Two up, two down. That's the first time on this road trip that Bellinger's been retired in a way other than a strikeout. Now five for 18, 12 Ks and a flyout. Two gone for Puig. Good as Kane has been, there's been traffic in each of the first five innings. Trying to work his first one, two, three inning of the night. And will. On to the bottom of the six. Giants up 5 1.
brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. And by Carl's Jr., the baby back rib burger, only at Carl's Jr. On the strength of a four-run fourth, the Giants lead the Dodgers 5-1. San Francisco hadn't won three in a row this year before yesterday. Now trying to make it four consecutive wins. Brandon McCarthy back to work against Brandon Crawford. And missing ball one. Giants start the day nine games back of the Rockies in the West. Even if they go on a really hot streak, the question for at least a while is going to remain, did they dig themselves too large of a hole to open this season to climb out of? They showed last year the opposite side of it, which was they were the best in the first half, then the worst in the second half. They'll need to flip the script this year. A pop up into short center. The wind will probably make this less than ordinary, but Jock camps under it for the first out of the inning. Do you think if the Giants stay relatively healthy, get Bumgarner back early August, do you think there'll be a factor down the stretch? That's a tough call. Yeah. Because of what's going on with their starting pitching and the bridge to get to Melanson, who's not healthy right now, but they expect back in a week or so. He has a throwing program going right now. Well, I think it, it depends. You know, their their offense is not doing well. But they are playing a little better right now, small ball and with some energy. The defense has drastically improved with Brandon Crawford out there again. He and span. And span for sure out there in center. It's a tough call. It really is. I, I, I would lean towards no right now. Too big of a hole. But not just too big of a hole, but too big of too many question marks around the hole. Oh, and two on Nunez. You know, they, they looked like they were going to get a lot of life from Christian Arroyo, but you can't all of a sudden expect him to just keep going. Uh, just like the Dodgers probably won't expect Cody Bellinger just to stay on the pace that he's on. McCarthy gets his fifth punch out. I really like the Dodger rotation. I really like what's going on with it, the depth of it, the quality of the depth. In the years past, you know, we've looked at Clayton Kershaw as really the guy that carries the rotation and everybody else kind of fills in around and it's not, you know, the biggest and best guys around him. We expected a big three one year with Ryu and Grinky and Kershaw. It really turned out to just be a big two. Ryu got hurt. And last year, you you know, you added to Kershaw at the end of the year with Hill and Urias. This year it's starting to look like Clayton is going to lead the pack still and really maybe put up some Cy Young numbers again. But the other guys around him, Alex Wood is throwing the ball in an outstanding way. Brandon McCarthy on the mound. I know it's a rough one tonight, but he's throwing the ball very well. Three balls, no strikes on Christian Arroyo. Urias is going to continue to grow, and he's a tremendous talent. There's, there's more guys, and Ryu might find it. It's going to be interesting. I really like their rotation, and our bullpen has been absolutely outstanding. It's a four-pitch walk. First walk of the game issued by McCarthy. He's thrown 92 pitches now. Well, you don't expect Rich Hill tomorrow to go particularly deep into the game and so it is important McCarthy can get you as deep as possible for him tonight with that bullpen you mentioned in mind wherever there's a Dodger question mark there seems like there's always a very good replacement part Mac Williamson now fouls it off strike one and so it, it just gives me a lot of confidence that as far as the construction of rosters and potential and what we're seeing executed on the field uh, no matter what the record is right now I still have a lot of confidence in the Dodger team being there all the way and probably finishing on top the Rockies do impress me though I think the biggest question mark for the Rockies is just how will their young pitching continue 
will they maintain their ability to throw strikes and when they hit those course field days will they be able to get their confidence back Grant Dayton headed down to the bullpen here's an 0 one and Williamson takes ball one Rockies off today starting a 10 game road trip tomorrow they're in Minnesota for three. Here comes the one one two balls one strike to Williamson in his season debut for the Giants singled in the third inning was the first base runner for San Francisco tonight came in to score their first run it's also grounded out to third. Two and two. He was part of a competition for left field during spring training him and Jared Parker but injured his quad and so started the season in triple A. I think that the front office of the Giants would admit that that was probably the biggest miscalculation they made this offseason was not trying to address left field externally. Of course they couldn't predict that both Parker and Williamson would deal with injuries. That's been a massive hole when you combine the fact that neither one of those guys stepped forward and then there's been so many injuries. Even now they have their third baseman that opened the year Eduardo Nunez playing left Williamson's in there and right because Pence is down. Arroyo at first with two away. And a 2 2 pitch. He runs on a ball. The throw to second. On the money, but late. And Christian Arroyo has his first major league stolen base. Pretty good throw by Yasmani Grandal. Ends up a little low out there at second base. So hard for a middle infielder to keep the glove in the area, even though you're going to receive a hop. Kind of got to give a little bit scoop and when you do that you take the glove away from the bag and then you have to return it to the bag and when you do that it's a little late. So it's an RBI chance for Williamson but with a pitcher on deck. McCarthy will be careful. Hence the 3 2 curveball. Is it 3 and 1 or 3 and 2? Ball. Yeah. I think he will still see a pitch that's near the edges and trying to fool him. Coming in with a fastball. Left it over the plate, and the Giants get an insurance run. Arroyo into score on a two out base hit from Williamson. Arroyo was running on the pitch already in scoring position at second base three two count pitcher on deck he was running. If he ends up walking them maybe they're trying to set up a first and third so they could double steal with the pitcher up but there's no need for that when you get the base hit to right. This will be McCarthy's final hitter. Matt Cain climbs in. Left handed batting Denard Span do next. Brandon McCarthy, the fourth hitter for the Dodgers next inning. So we'll see if Kane does reach, if Dave Roberts elects to do a double switch. Or we let Grant Dayton pitch the inning and then pinch hit for him. That's foul and it's 0 and 2. So McCarthy has now made two outings here in San Francisco in a Dodger uniform, and neither one of them has gone well. Gave up six runs without recording an out in relief last September, and here he's allowed six over five and two thirds. Ball one on Kane. It's his first start here since he was with Arizona in 2013. That was a good one. Gave up just one run over eight innings.
Kane pulls a base hit to left. And a rude way for Brandon McCarthy's night likely to come to a close. 103 pitches and Dave Roberts looks like in the dugout he's getting ready to come out. Maybe still discussing his own batting order what he wants to do. He's going to double switch. Headed to Mike Winters, the home plate umpire, so that's probably a sign that there's going to be a double switch. McCarthy cruised early, retired the first seven that he faced, was in great rhythm, working with great tempo. But the Giants getting one in the third, four in the fourth, and at least one here in the sixth. Puig comes out in a double switch. Grant Dayton comes into the game, and Scott Van Slyke will play right. Allowed by McCarthy. Time for who's in, who's out. Brought to you by In and Out. McCarthy's out. Dayton is in for his 14th appearance this year. Grant Dayton, an excellent piece down the Dodger bullpen. Mostly the fastball, but working on the curveball for a strike and to bounce it to get lefties out. He'll have an opportunity here with Span at the plate. Pitched an inning on Thursday in Colorado with a couple of K's. Span one for three in this one. And Dayton misses for the first one. Grant has allowed five runs this year. They came in two outings, so his other 11 outings have been scoreless. Including his last three. You mentioned the one against Colorado. Also a scoreless outing against Pittsburgh and the same against San Diego. Span lifts a fly ball to left center field. This is playable for Bellinger, and the inning is over. But the Giants add one and chase McCarthy, and after six, it's 6 1.
calendar is brought to you by 76. Two more on this road trip here against San Francisco and then home to begin a 10 game homestand. The Marlins are in for four. And the Cardinals in for three and the Cubs in for three. It should be a fun 10 games. As the Dodgers come home after this week plus trip. It's going to be another one of those things where we see one team a bunch in a relatively short stretch. In a 10 game span, the Dodgers will play the Cardinals seven times. Once you start a schedule where you play a lot of people at the same time, it's got to exist the rest of the year. It just has to, or you're not going to end up playing everybody. Dave Roberts team trying to solve Matt Kane, who pitches into the seventh for only the second time this year. Trying to get his first win since he beat the Dodgers on April 24th. His high pitch count for the year is 92, but he hasn't been over 90 for five starts, so 98 is getting close to pretty much a high watermark. Otley Taylor and Hernandez do against him. He's not thrown 100 pitches, Oral, since May 21st of last year. A lot of that has been the health issues. But a lot of that has been he's just not been very good and not had an opportunity to pitch too deep into games. That could be said for most of last year. Better here in 2017 for the most part. His 100th pitch is hammered to right field. Williamson back on it with room for the first out. Home run velocity, home run launch angle, but not into this wind coming in from the water. Home run velocity, home run launch, fly ball wind. <laughs> exactly. Fly out wind. Taylor's one for two. Kane starts him with a curve, strike one. Changes his arm angle on this one and spins in another strike. Memphis, Tennessee native. At home when he's outdoors, prefers a quiet, slower pace. Grew up on a huge plot of land actually outside of Memphis, Tennessee. Hunting, fishing, biking. Did a lot of bird hunting growing up. Two balls, two strikes on Taylor. Thirty two year old home with the next one to Taylor and it's dumped back. Matt Kane given this giant rotation a boost. Everything they have going on to find some quality starts. Taylor with an opposite field base hit. Come watch the Dodgers play host of the Chicago Cubs during a three game series Memorial Day weekend Friday May 26th through Sunday May 28th the NLC rematch against the Cubs will be the 2016 world champions only visit to Los Angeles for tickets visit Dodgers.com slash tickets. Cubs enter the day in fourth place in the central. Cardinals Brewers Reds all ahead of the Cubs. Kike Hernandez gets under this one. See what the wind does with it. Belt over to check it as well. Pulled it back towards fair territory, but dropped foul. Not only a tough one for the fielders to read, a tough one for Chris Taylor, the runner at first, to read because Kike's watching it right down the line start to come back. Chris Taylor doesn't have that angle. It falls in. It's going to be very hard. For him to even get to second if the Giants could recover it quickly.
One ball and one strike. I have to feel like this is Matt Cain's last hitter. Scott Van Slyke, a guy who punishes left-handers and also probably a punish a tired righty. Probably see a fresh arm against him. Especially 108 pitches deep, most in a year for Kane. Gets a strike on one that backs up, one and two. Taylor's base hit, Utley's ball that should have been a home run, but the wind brought back, and this hanging curveball has to be enough evidence for Bruce Bochy to say this is going to be it. Just barely got a piece on a fastball that looked like it was rising. As you get tired, your arm drops. Maybe you're just throwing it uphill a little bit. <laughs> Kane four Ks tonight. He's walked three. The Dodgers with a one run on five hits. Came back in the third on a grand all double. Short lead at first for Taylor, and a one two comes home for ball two. Only one out. Kike reaches base. You've got a little bit of a comeback opportunity if you're wearing blue. Got him swinging out in front of a 75 mile per hour breaking pitch. And that will end Matt Cain's night. Six and two thirds and the Dodgers against him this year just one run over twelve and two thirds. And Kane will receive quite an ovation from this crowd. LA is brought to you by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. Matt Cain, great effort for the Giants tonight. Hands it over to a bullpen, which suddenly has been good. 14 consecutive shutout innings. Brian Morris has been a part of that. Most of the damage done against him early on in his time up in his five appearances. Nothing against him his last three times out. Trying to race a bad memory he had against the Dodgers on May 2nd. Four hits that day, three runs, but none of the guys that got hits that day are actually in the lineup. Turner, Gonzalez, Tolls, those guys are not in there right now, so some fresh faces are going to have to face Brian Morris and get the hits for the Dodgers. Taylor singled with one out. At first with two gone now and an 0-1 to Scott Van Slyke. 
drilled down the left field line, but it's foul. That would have pierced the win had it been straight. Two balls hit well enough this inning to be home runs. Chase Utley's fly out to right, and that foul ball, if he could straighten it out. A <laughs> Dodger fan got the foul ball over a Giant fan. Yeah, and got booed. <laughs> Morris gets Van Slyke on three pitches. Stretch time in San Francisco. The Giants behind Matt Kane have a 6 1 lead. Time now for the game summary brought to you by Morongo Casino. Dodgers got the game's first one when the Osmani Grandal brought home Corey Seager with a double in the third. But the Giants in the bottom of that inning scored four times against Brandon McCarthy. They're actually in the bottom of the fourth after they tied it in the bottom of the third. Nunez brought home two with that single. And they added a run in the sixth inning at 6 1 as we go here to the bottom of the seventh. Grant Dayton in there facing Joe Panic ahead of him 0 and 1. One and one. Very frustrating night for the Dodger offense so far. Chase Utley lined into a double play to first base, hit a ball that could have been a home run last inning to right field, got knocked down. It's an offense that's averaged almost six runs a game during this hot streak, and a pitching staff that's had an ERA under three uh, tonight. Kind of flopped. Starting pitching wasn't quite up to par, and the offense has not found its groove. It's back to back days now. The Dodgers starters not been fantastic. Maria struggled yesterday. McCarthy struggled today. It'll be up to Rich Hill to get that group back on track tomorrow. Two and two on panic. High block counters for San Francisco. As Chris Hatcher goes down with Josh Bard to get loose. And then it'll be Kershaw and Cueto in the finale Wednesday afternoon. That's a 12.45 first pitch. Rich Hill being activated will have to have a corresponding move. Brett Eidner was sent down for the Brandon McCarthy move today. The boos that you hear are because Pantone 294 has pulled out the big flag. How do they get that thing in here? I love it. I absolutely love it.
Here's the payoff to Panic. Fouls in our direction. No, no, wrong timing for that, buddy. Kind of has a Premier League soccer feel to it in here right now. I'm knocking on the glass between booths. The giant booth has got the flag on their broadcast. They're laughing and talking about it. Hernandez near the dugout for the first out. Did you get their attention? Oh, yeah, I got Glenn Kuiper smiled at me. He almost he took his headset off like he wa I wanted to talk to him. Just no, I'm just pointing out at the flag. <laughs> There's Kuiper and Kruko. What kind of headset is it that Kuiper uses there? Is he like directing air traffic? Uh, he looks like he like is a backup singer for J Lo. <laughs> He's got the way, you know, I got to make sure I look good on camera. I got to have the smallest mic around. Brandon Belt. Lifts one to shallow left. Bellinger is there. Two up, two down. <laughs> In the truck, they just said in my headset, we just took a vote. And he does not look like anything as far as a backup singer for <laughs> J-Lo. <laughs> Your point's well taken, though, with the headset. Yeah, I mean, you know, the microphone. The, such a small one. He's got the right skin tone. You can barely tell. It looks like maybe it's an old blemish. Dayton trying to work a one, two, three, seventh inning here. He's gotten the two-hitter panic and the three-hitter belt. Now Posey, who's one for three today. Strike one, good guys over there. A lot of good people in, that we get to come across in this division and in this league. It's fun to compete against them. It's fun to have the arch rivalry angst, and we get to then kid back and forth up here with them and also trade a little information every once in a while on how's your team playing, what's going on, how the Buster Posey adjustment, all that power come around, and they talked about how the leg kick's been eliminated, and they get to hang around him. and be on the bus and the plane with them so they get a little bit more of the insider trading stuff. That's a ball. It's one and two. And Buster Posey. Four time all star former MVP former rookie of the year. Grew up in Leesburg Georgia. Same part of the country Grant Dayton grew up, Huntsville, Alabama area. <laughs> two and two. Buster at his childhood home in Leesburg had what every kid dreams of having a field in his front yard. Wow. Lived on a 50 acre plot of land and his dad built a field. They even put in a makeshift backstop. And when the local Little League field was being used, they needed an extra. They'd go over to the Posey house. I'm glad you added the 50 acres because there were so many kids going to be asking for baseball fields in the front yard until <laughs> the you gave the dads all the excuse. Right. We don't have 50 acres. Yeah. Well, then get it, Dad. I want <laughs> yeah. a baseball field. Yeah, 50 acres in San Francisco, 50 acres in L.A. Let's go. Get a better job. <laughs> High drive to left. Bellinger back, twisting to the wall. It's gone. Buster Posey with his fifth home run in the last seven games. As good as Buster Posey has been for San Francisco the last few weeks before the power erupted he was starting to hear whispers around town about what's going on with him. Taking a look at our Arco top tier play brought to you by Arco Buster Posey brings you a highlight that the Dodgers don't like but the giant fans do.
just barely gets out in a 7 1 game as Dayton comes home to Brandon Crawford with ball one. He sure is hot right now and getting his front foot down earlier. Not using a big leg kick, but still having plenty of power. Two and zero on Crawford. And Posey over the first month of the season, the big thing was, yeah, he's hitting for average, but zero power. Not knocking anybody in. That's obviously not all his fault. There weren't many guys on in front of him. But he has started to produce in a very powerful way over the last week as he's made that swing adjustment. Two and one on Crawford. And really still nobody on in front of him. Um, you know, six home runs, 10 RBIs, so a lot of solo shots. Yeah. That was before that home run, of course, six and ten. By my math, now seven and eleven. You are with it. All you right. Got it. Three and one. Besides the RBIs, the numbers now looking really good. Average above 370, seven homers. And a walk to Crawford. And Buster Posey is tied up in San Francisco here for a long time. Mm -hmm. See here till like 2021 is age 34 season. Club record extension that he signed. He signed it back in 2013 worth 167 million. And so when he signed it, that added nine seasons. Runner at first with two gone, and Nunez comes up. And takes a ball. His childhood hero had a pretty good night last night in the Bronx. Derek Jeter getting his number retired. It's a guy that Nunez grew up wanting to be. And then, remarkably, he was the guy the Yankees pegged to be Jeter's replacement eventually. 2 0. Froze the first time he met Jeter at spring training. Couldn't even speak. Met in a conference room. There. Pulled Jeter aside and said, This kid uh, has been looking forward to meeting you. Eduardo eventually made his major league debut as a pinch hitter for Jeter. And then his first few seasons in the majors were spent mostly as his backup, backing up A Rod at third. It's in his eighth year now, but it's only his second year as an everyday guy. Three balls, no strikes. Had to head to the Twins to get that opportunity. First time he was handed an everyday role, he was an all star. And the Giants got him at the trade deadline for minor league pitcher. Strike one. What if I told you that Buster Posey's home run was not a hard hit ball? Really? 93 miles an hour exit velocity, 37 degree launch angle. Darren Williams says that only 2% of balls hit like that become home runs. What percent? 2%. 2%. That means there was some wind that helped that. I would think Cody Bellinger looked like he had a read on it until he crashed into the wall. He just ran out of room and but it looked like for the last 25 feet or so that he thought he was going to probably catch it. Yeah, I don't know what you've thought about in just watching the flags, but 
it seemed to me that it's either been swirling or pretty stiffly blowing right to left, which might have boosted that ball. Mm -hmm. And you think about Chase Utley's ball getting knocked down directly to right field. That yeah. would. That's scalded to center, sending Peterson back. Won't get there. Crawford will score from first on a double from Nunez. And the Giants, for the second day in a row, have matched a season high with eight runs. Grant Dayton lives by the high fastball, sometimes dies by the high fastball. Nunez gets on top of this one and just blisters it into whatever wind is out there in center field. Chuck Peterson can't catch up to it, and it looks like that's going to be all for Grant Dayton. Giants get two on him with two outs here in the seventh. Austin Barnes comes in with an infielder's glove for a sighting like that for him this year. Second said it was his first appearance in the infield this year. He's actually played two innings in the infield, one third of an inning in Chicago, played third base, and then he played two innings at second against Philadelphia in late April. Chris Hatcher on for the second day in a row. Trying to find the range, Chris Hatcher is. Gave up some hits in Colorado yesterday and looking just to hit some more spots like he was when he was on his hot streak. Gorkis Hernandez pinch running for Eduardo Nunez at second, and Arroyo rolls one right under him to Corey Seeger. And Chris Hatcher needs one pitch to end the seventh. Two more for the Giants. Posey goes deep, and it's 8 1.
celebrating Mother's Day and raising awareness for breast cancer research. And you'll see the guys today wearing a red ribbon on their uniform and their clothing, both the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants wearing these red ribbons. It is for Until There's a Cure Day, guys, dedicated to ending HIV and AIDS. The Giants asked if the Dodgers would participate, and they happily obliged. All right, appreciate that, Alana. Chuck Peterson wearing that red ribbon. Climbs in to lead off the eighth against Josh Osich in an 8-1 hole. Those look pretty good on the Dodgers traveling uniforms for the red numbers. Strike one. Osich has been hot since being recalled. Opponents only one for 17 off of him. That 059 batting average. Between the eight to one deficit and Osich on the mound. That's a pretty big hill to climb. Giants got one in the third, four in the fourth, one in the sixth, and two in the seventh tonight. Dodgers lone run coming in the third. Osich with a 1 1. Peterson lays off 2 and 1. Oh, never mind, 1 and 2. Jock started the game with a double but was stranded at second. Dodgers have had at least one base runner in every inning except the sixth tonight. Barely get a piece to stay alive. Jock back in his home territory, relatively speaking, here is from Palo Alto. Not too far from here in San Francisco. Leading off the eighth against Osich by striking out on a fastball at 96. Great Dodger moments coin collection presented by 76 continues on Thursday, May 18th versus the Marlins. The first 40,000 fans in attendance at 7:10. The game will start. We'll receive the third coin commemorating Clayton Kershaw's no hitter. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com/promotions. Kershaw pitch Wednesday against Johnny Cueto. Corey Seager looks at a breaking ball strike one. Another curve and another strike. Boy this guy's tough. Giants are looking for bridges to the end. It looks like right now he is definitely part of the structure. Going outside on 0-2 and Seeger queuing it. Foul ball still 0-2. No Melanson right now, but the seven-run lead that doesn't matter much. Ball one. Back to back, Kay's looking for Osich against Peterson and Seeger. Left on left, both of them, and Osich now one for 19 batters. And it doesn't matter if you're left handed or right handed, he is tough. 61 is going to be a new favorite number for Giant fans. Grandall now with the bases empty and two gone. Cracks one in the air to center, span on the move. He's got it. And the Dodgers down in order here in the eighth.
of work, John Hartung, Jerry Hairston Jr. and Nomar Garcia Parra will break down not only Brandon's outing, but the lack of offense in this game, guys. It won the score, Alana. As Chris Hatcher goes back out there for the bottom of the eighth inning, needed just one pitch to finish off the seventh. This is Mac Williamson. Kind of an interesting matchup. These guys both from North Carolina, but have taken opposite paths to the majors. Hatcher, a former catcher, who's become a major league pitcher. Williamson was the top high school pitching prospect in North Carolina. Fastball, strike one. Didn't play the outfield until he got to college at Wake Forest. It's a catcher and a third baseman in high school, but mainly a pitcher, hard throwing pitcher. So they've traded places, so to speak. That reminds me of Brett Eibner, who was the closer at Arkansas, throws very, very hard, hit the really long distance home run in Colorado. Was it 465? Yeah. Well, the day after, and he got sent down to AAA today. But the day after, he threw a side work with Rick Honeycutt. Really? Yeah, in Colorado bullpen, just to show Rick what he had. I saw Rick on the airplane as I was walking to my seat and passed him and stopped in the row behind him and chatted. And he, I said, so what do you got? Ivner, I saw him throw early in a bullpen. What's that all about? He goes, just want to see him. He was a closer at Arkansas, and you never know. And I said, so what would you see? He goes, it's really firm. <laughs> it's really firm. You could see that. It's a big man. Kelby Tomlinson's first stab bat of the day begins with strike one. So Ivner went down today with the activation of Brandon McCarthy. Who knows? We we'll read the notes sometime on AAA. Maybe we'll see him on the hill. Hit a 465-foot home run and sent back to AAA. Oh, and two. I think he hit 300 while he was up here. I think he was three for ten. Sporadic time. Mm -hmm. That's over the two stints. Uh -huh. Yeah. With a home run and a few RBIs. Another example of the Dodger depth and the quality of it. Two up and two down for Hatcher on a pair of strikeouts here in the eighth. Boy, I love that pitch. His slider and his changeup, he gets hurt on his fastball so much because sometimes the command is off. The velocity is always there, but the command. But when you can mix in this, which also Pedro Baez has started to throw more. Then you can get away with a bigger spray pattern with your fastball because then if the bat ball's in the wrong place, but the velocity will beat them, they'll be late. So you get them another way. But you're gonna have to throw enough change-ups to get the bigger spray pattern for your fastball. Started off speed on span, missed up, ball one. Eight one Giants lead out hitting the Dodgers 10 five in this one. That's foul and strike one. Two more coming in this series here in San Francisco and the teams will take a break for a while before. Restarting the season series 10 times in a 24 day stretch we're coming to a close on. Giants are three outs away from moving to five and three against the Dodgers this year. I want to reach the seats one and two. For whatever reason the Giants just seem to play their best against the Dodgers. This would mean that five of their 16 wins have been against L.A. Remember you know the narrative around the Dodgers in April was well they haven't really got going and what we end up two games over 500 in April the year before we won it I think we were two or three under 500. It's really it's a season of. For a high quality team like the Dodgers, it's a season of maintaining and getting hot. Maintain and get hot. Chris Hatcher strikes out the side in the eighth inning, and on to the ninth we go.
this year. They lost by eight on April 21st at Arizona. Trail by seven onto the ninth in this one. Josh Osich back out there to face the middle part of the order. Could also be a franchise tying comeback. <laughs> it could. <laughs> it could. No, is it eight? Down. Eight. Oh, yeah. This would this well, would be the L.A. record, right? Which is six. Franchise record eight. Although that didn't happen in one inning. <laughs> It'd be something. Cody Bellinger leads off this inning and takes a strike. It'd be absolute something. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> you had a chance to see the backstage Dodgers yet that looked at the uh, three home run ninth inning. No it is awesome. Uh, I will definitely look at the guide and make sure I catch it. Dave Strump and the team there. Um, backstage Dodgers great job of storytelling putting yeah. it together and comparing the uh, the four plus one game. We have to go there again. The four plus one. <laughs> I always used to kid Nomar oh. like anytime somebody would hit back to back home runs we had to talk about four plus one. Well anytime somebody throws back to back scoreless innings you know where we're going. No we're not. <laughs> Two scoreless innings. <laughs> okay three. <laughs> okay. A 2 1. And Bellinger lifts the fly ball to left center field. And Gorkis Hernandez settles under it for the first out of the ninth. Back at it tomorrow night, same time, same place. 7 15 first pitch. It'll be Rich Hill coming off of the DL for the Dodgers against Ty Block of San Francisco, who is in Madison Bumgarner's spot in the rotation. And then 12:45 Wednesday getaway day. Dodgers return home after that. Open up a 10-game homestand Thursday night with a Florida Mar or the Miami Marlins. It's been a few years since I could get away with that. One and on Barnes. The Marlins are 14 and 22 right now. They've dropped eight of their last 10. Florida Marlins won the World Championship in 1997. They did. Miami Marlins have not won it. Not close. <laughs> Although they have a great art sculpture in the outfield there. So they have that going for them. Beauty's in the eye of the holder. <laughs> Jeffrey Loria, who is selling the team, is a huge art guy. Barnes shoots it foul, and it's one and two. So that's. Uh, Supposed to be art, that home run sculpture, as they call it. What's the higher brow term for art guy? I'm not the guy to ask. No, there's art aficionado, suppose. Connoisseur. Yeah. Collector. I'm trying to fill. <laughs> Anything right now. <laughs> Come on, eight to one. Get some hits. Osich to Barnes with a one two offering, and Austin gets one. A base hit to center. Austin is a hit collector. Sure has been lately, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. That was probably one of his weakest exit velocities. That one he just served out there. Brings up Utley, who is 0 for 2 tonight, but has hit the ball hard twice. Lined him into a double play his first time, and then hit a ball that, in some parks on some days, would have been gone. You think more often than not would have been gone? Yeah, I think so for sure. We've had a lot of tricky fly balls here today that you really can't tell, other than by the hitter's reaction, what it really should have been. All the way from Buster Posey's 93 mile an hour exit velocity. Fly ball that only 2% of the time ends up a home run, so it wasn't even great at a well hit ball to Chase Utley's bullet to right field that he looked like he got everything. So rare 
blowout in this series. Four of the first seven were decided by one run. Three of them went into extras. Dodgers had one blowout win against Matt Moore. Utley's ahead two and one. Big story for the Giants, at least the last couple of days, has been the offense coming alive. Enter the game with the second worst offense in baseball as far as runs per game, only better than the Kansas City Royals at about three and a half. But back to back days with eight runs, matching a season high with those eight. Three and one. So my eyes are off even on reading hitters because Chase's fly ball to right was only 92.7 miles an hour. Buster Posey's home run was 93 and as we've said 95 is classified a hard hit ball. So I guess a couple of weak hitters up there by the plate. <laughs> <laughs> a 3 1. And he walks. Right. They're begging for a little action, you get some. And he get a pitching change. Bruce Bochy coming out. Osich has thrown 24 of them. And in an 8 1 game, they'll make the switch. Hey, you Garen to try and get the game's final two outs. Corey Garen's nickname could be the Hitman. He's hit five guys this year, which is tied for the most in the majors. Bruce Bochy just trying to watch the pitch count on all his pitchers right here tonight. Corey, Cody Garen, Corey Garen has not been real, real good. Giving up a lot of hits, a lot of hit batters, a lot of walks. So that's a deceiving 115, huh? I think so. Chris Taylor with two on and one out. Slide steps in, ball one. Chris, two more hits tonight. Corey Guerin's last four outings have not been real good. Opponents hitting 320 often. Ball on a strike on Taylor. Garen from Evansville, Tennessee. And played his college ball at Mercer. It's a good program in Georgia. Thirty-one year old home with a one-one pitch. And he falls behind Taylor two and one. 
Started his career with the Braves 2011 through 2013. Few years there. Now in his third year with the Giants. After the Braves released him. Three and one. Gearing like a lot of guys, a Tommy John surgery guy had that after those first three years in Atlanta. And it was while he was rehabbing that the Braves released him. Two on, one out in the ninth inning, and a 3 1 pitch to Chris Taylor. Had one to Pound, but it's fouled off, full count. I found the kink in that ERA. Hmm. Over 50% of his inherited runners have scored. So the batting average against and different things have not padded his earn run average. The walks and the hit batters and the hits are what Bruce Bochy is watching and hoping things improve. I know you say ERAs can be deceiving for relievers, and there's a perfect example of one. Sure. A lot of times a high ERA is even deceiving too. Here comes a payoff. Taylor shoots a base hit down the right field line. This brings home Austin Barnes. RBI double for Chris Taylor in a three hit night. Dodger offense starting to wake up. It might end up being a little too late, but it's been a nice mix of veterans getting hits. Like Brown Dahl and Utley, and a lot of the young guys getting hits the Chris Taylors, the Cody Bellingers, the Austin Barnes. Not going to waste any time. Not going to fool around. Derek Law is their closer right now with Mark Melanson on the shelf, and he goes out and starts to warm. Kind of reminds you of the first game of this road trip, where at the very least, the Dodgers gathered some momentum. And again, they trailed 10 nothing in Denver. They scored seven runs, brought the tying run to the plate in the ninth inning, and forced the Rockies to bring their closer, Greg Holland, into the game. Very well may fall short in this one, but at least something to feel good about towards the end of the game, heading into the rest of the series. In Colorado, they won the two games they're supposed to in the middle with two good starting pitching performances from Wood and Kershaw. And the Two rough starting pitching performances. They almost came back and won. Gutierrez pinch hitting. One and oh. And the groans you hear from the Giants fans aren't just send us home, it's cold. It's are we ever going to just have an easy night from our bullpen? Because it's been years, I'm sure it feels like. It was the biggest reason for the tailspin last year. And the biggest reason they went and signed Mark Melanson in the offseason. They had put a pretty good streak together lately, mm -hmm. but this has not been an easy task here getting these last few outs. First run they've allowed in 16 innings. One and two on Gutierrez. Taken low and it's two and two. <laughs> there are people sitting in front of us here in, in the our booths in San Francisco are what five feet from the row closest to the booth. There he is, right down there, that guy. I think they know that they're on our air.
Now the 2-2. Gutierrez bangs a base hit into center. It brings home Chase Otley, and it's an 8-3 game. It's uncanny how similar this is to the opener in Colorado. Base hit, walk, double, base hit. Keep the line moving is what they're saying in the Dodger dugout. Chris Woodward is going to keep the line slow because there's no sense pushing the envelope and scoring a run that might cause an out. Just keep going station to station. And he's going to bring the closer in. So again, at the very least, same could be said last Thursday, at the very least, the Dodgers rally enough to force the opponent to bring on the closer. And Mark Melanson went on the DL and he is now in the closers role and somehow he's in the game here in the ninth inning with two having come across two on one out Scott Van Slyke still work to do before it gets really interesting one and oh Derek Laws three for four in his save opportunities and he's out there he's got plenty of room tonight and Bruce Bochy doesn't want him to use any of it. He's tired of watching this inning I'm sure. 2 and 0. So if Scott can reach the tying run would come into the on deck circle and that's usually where you draw the line of getting somewhat interesting in Colorado in the game one when it ended up 10 7 we got the tying run to the plate mm -hmm. Chase Utley hit a double play I think I remember. That one goes to the backstop. Chris Taylor is going to score. More importantly, the count is three and zero. Oh. Scott Van Slyke pretty much has to take two pitches. Even if you keyhole him and hit a line drive, it's still an out. But force him to throw three strikes. Try and keep the line moving. Gutierrez up to second. Look, more action in the bullpen. Strike one. After Van Slyke, top of the order. Jock Peterson do next. Off the end of the bat in short left field Gorky Hernandez comes on and he's got it for the second out. So after getting ahead three and all. Ultimately he flies out to left and the Dodgers down to their final out as Jack Peterson comes up. They got a base hit a walk a double and a single without recording it out. Can they put a string like that together again. Jock has reached twice started the game with a double and he's also walked.
fastball for a strike. You know, the tendency here though is the closer it gets the more detail you think about the runs you've allowed in you try to find ways where it could be even closer it's one and one in the 80s with Tommy Lasorda it was called the yellow pages and they recorded all the different parts of the game where you hurt us or you did something well. You never wanted to be on the yellow pages in a place where it was a negative. Because everybody looks at the last two or three innings or the last inning of where you could have won, but it happens throughout the whole game. One and two. The leadoff double from Jock in the first inning is the first place you look. And a strikeout, a fly out the center, and a strikeout. And he was stranded. Jock trying to keep hope alive just a little bit longer with Corey Seeger on deck. Three runs have scored here in the ninth to make it 8 4. A 1 2. And he taps it past third foul. Do it again. One in the third, four in the fourth, one in the sixth, two in the seventh for San Francisco tonight. Hadn't won three in a row all year before yesterday. Now a strike away from their fourth consecutive win. Two and two. Dodgers haven't lost back to back games since April 21st and 22nd. It's before this 20 game stretch where they're 14 and 6. Jock fouls it back, continuing to battle against Law. The Dodger team continuing to battle against the Giants. Trailed 8 1 coming into this ninth inning. Three hits and a walk, make that four hits against the giant bullpen. And another 2 2 coming here to Jack Peterson. Got him. And the Giants take the series opener by a final score of eight to four. Still have a chance for a winning road trip, but you've got to do it with Rich Hill coming back and then Clayton Kershaw against Johnny Cueto in the last game. They turned it around in Colorado. Can they turn it around here in San Francisco? Lexus player of the game is the Giants starting pitcher Matt Kane goes six plus. And allows just one run. He's now gone 12 and two thirds against the Dodgers this year and given up only the one run that came on a grand off double back in the third inning. For Oral Hershiser, Alana Rizzo, and the rest of our crew, Joe Davis saying so long from San Francisco. Game two of the series tomorrow. Rich Hill against Ty Block as the Dodgers.